studies Bishop Beaver College, Trichrapalli. I am also a freelancer in the event management industry for the last 20 years, doing lot of events and uh, getting experience and exposure through all the events which I came across. Now I am going to share few of my experiences along with the content of identifying potential sponsors in this video. The topic we are going to discuss is identifying sponsorship for events. How to identify the sponsors, how to get sponsorship, what are the methods available to choose a sponsor, who will be your potential sponsors, these are all the topics we can discuss in this particular video. But as a event management students, we should be very, very careful and cautious while you are meeting your sponsors. First and the foremost step, you cannot go and ask everybody for the sponsor, whom to approach, how to approach, when to approach is the basic criteria to identify the sponsor. When you are going for the first time or second time or repeatedly, a businessman or a big company will never give you sponsors. It will take a lengthy process or it may be a, a long time process to get a sponsor. How to identify such type of potential sponsors is the topic we are going to discuss. Learning objectives, who are the clients or who are the sponsors? How do clients sponsor events? How do you decide on appropriate sponsorship? Identifying the sponsorship and then to identify the sponsorship, uh, how we are going to apply the Siddharth Willi criteria as proposed by Crompton in the year 1993. So these are all the uh, learning objectives which we are going to see in this particular episode, who are all the clients or who are all called as sponsors? Clients are those people, they may be individuals or they may be groups or they may be organization. What is an event? This you might have been come across in so many episodes, but just I'm giving a glimpse of it. According to McDonnell et al in 1999, sponsorship is a commercial contract in which the event promises to deliver promises to deliver certain benefits and rights to the sponsor in return for cash or and services in kind now uh, let's look into the uh, sponsorship who are all the parties involved or who are all the people involved in this entire process there are three people or uh, three groups we are going to concentrate Number one is the sponsor. Sponsor is the person who is doing the business investment and sponsees or the event management companies or the people those who are taking the job. And then the third one is the target audience. For them, for those people only, we are conducting the events. They are the target groups. How do you decide appropriate sponsorship? You cannot go and ask everybody, those who are uh, having a business or those who are uh, uh, having some other promotional aspects or uh, they are spending more on advertisement. You cannot go and ask each and everybody for a sponsor. Sometimes uh, it's very embarrassing for the company to talk about uh, the sponsorship to certain type of people. But unfortunately, people, those who are very rich and uh, a company may have a very uh, wide bra bandwidth, uh, may not be willing to uh, sponsor any events. But a company who may be a loss making company or a startup, uh, they may be willing to give sponsorship. How to identify it? How do you decide on appropriate sponsorship? Number one is obtaining sponsorship is a time consuming process. And the first day, if you're going and the people are welcoming you and asking you to sit and uh, giving the money is a nightmare. It's not at all possible. 
could be the damaging to your ego sometimes they may ask you to wait for hours together you have to wait outside politely they may be uh, simply sitting inside and they may be having chit chat with their friends but they are not calling us inside but it is not to be the case that we have to leave everything and we should have our ego why should we wait you should not have all these egos but you have to wait because we are going to meet our sponsor if there is refusal from the sponsor please don't regret for that say with a heart a whole hearted uh, smile thank you sir next time please try to sponsor us so that should be your word and you should not show any anger to them if an event how do you decide on the appropriate sponsorship the next is that if if an event cannot offer a sponsor appropriate benefits then a donation to the event may be appropriate some of the uh, very big companies or some of the business uh, people may not be willing to sponsor or uh, they may not be uh, in a ready made position to accept your offers for certain type of publicity but they may be willing to give some a uh, meager amount of donation and that at least we must get it and we must be happy with that a donation is actually a philanthropy with no obligation for benefits to be given in return we should be very clear that uh, we uh, we are not committing any anything to them just they are giving us donation to conduct the event we should be happy in that uh, for example if you are going to conduct some events for a charitable institution or for some noble cause uh, you cannot expect people everybody to sponsor sometimes they want to give something free of cost to the people uh, they will be doing some philanthropy or some donations to that particular ngo they don't want any publicity or they don't want any uh, return from those type of things so those type of uh, sponsorship also should be taken care of for an event to be suitable for sponsorship we must before going and meeting the particular client or the sponsor we should be very careful whether this particular sponsorship is suitable for them whether we can address that to that particular company or to the uh, brand does the event have some benefits that can be offered to the potential sponsor by doing the sponsorship what is the beneficial uh, aspects which a brand can achieve through this event does the target audience approve of commercial sponsorship i can give you an example if the company is suitable for sponsoring the event or not should be verified for example uh, it won't be right for a tobacco or a liquor company to sponsor an event for teenagers almost it is prohibited and it is not uh, to be a good uh, ethical point in asking them to sponsor for, uh, for those type of uh, events uh, or any events is the event company equipped with people who have expertise and uh, uh, time to construct uh, sponsorship packages that should be verified then uh, does the event uh, have a policy on sponsorship some companies don't have a policy at all to sponsor for any events in that case simply we cannot go and wait outside and you cannot have a chit chat with the people and uh, you may not be expecting for uh, other mails or uh, uh, backgrounds or uh, um, further talks or negotiations there is no point in that because the uh, policy of the company is uh, not to give sponsorship at all they may be giving a certain type of uh, philanthropy or donation but they will never give sponsorship that may be a company policy in that case you cannot uh, waste your time a sponsorship policy should highlight what all the event organizations uh, can and cannot do in terms of uh, attracting and delivering sponsorship benefits once the above questions are answered in positive way you may go ahead to obtain a particular sponsorship uh, certain companies will sponsor only for a particular type of event like educational event uh, or for a public sanitation event uh, they will not sponsor for any entertainment event in those case we should be very careful depends upon the policy we should go and approach the sponsor sponsor what they are expecting from you or what is the need 
or what is the benefit which they are going to get out of sponsorship. You should have a clear picture about that and you should explain to the sponsor. Number one is the image. Every sponsor want an image for their product, for their company, for themselves. So that is the first point you should keep it in your mind as an event management company and as a person who is going to sponsor in both the sides, image is very much important. The next one is the awareness. Sometimes the company, they want to create awareness in the market about their new arrivals or new products or usage of the product, utility of the product or variety of products. In that case, they want to give sponsorship. Then associations with the people. Some company will have a policy to have always association with uh, like uh, Confederation of Indian Industries or uh, MMA or certain organizations like that. So in that case, if they are conducting some event, these people are willing to sponsor to create a, a good rapport with these type of associations. Then increase sales. The ultimate goal of all the sponsors is to increase their sales uh, nationally, locally, globally. So their main focus uh, on all type of sponsor is nothing but improve the sales or increase the sales. Then the next point is the new client. What the new clients will do in that? They want to get new clients through these type of events or the campaigns what the event management company is going to run. They want to get more new, uh, what you can say that uh, franchisor or you want a new uh, group of wholesalers or you want to get a new type of uh, outlets uh, or a big bulk buyer they may have been. These are all some of the uh, events which they are expecting or they are expecting a new clients uh, through these events. They may be asking us to uh, prepare a stall for them and in that they will be displaying their new arrivals and try to give franchisee through that. These type of uh, events should be taken care. Then about a target reach. So target reach is who are all the people going to witness your show or who are all the people going to come for the particular event. That must be the reach. 10,000 people, 5,000 people or educationalist. Uh, in spite of all these things, uh, sometimes uh, people may not be willing to sponsor but that is not an issue, you have to proceed with that. Then next focus is on media coverage. Initially, if you are going and meeting a person for a sponsor, you will ask in which television or in which show our logo is going to come, our brand is going to come. This is what the question, who is the celebrity going to come, how the show will be, who is going to cover it. These are all the questions they will ask you. You should be ready to answer for all those things. They want maximum coverage globally, a role of event manager. As an event manager, you should try to identify what the sponsors want from the event, uh, whether they want the brand image, they want the awareness, or they want a new client, or what they want. That should be identified by a new event manager or any event manager who is going and attending the sponsor. And the next point is what the event can deliver for them. What the event can deliver for them? The event can deliver a good uh, potential sales or it may give a platform for them to compete globally. All these points should be taken care of. Identifying sponsorship, a good way to identify potential sponsors for the events is analyze their event using the following criteria which was proposed by Crampton in the year 1993 through a memorable acronym of SEDAR EEEE, which summarizes the screening process that businesses use when evaluating sponsorship proposals. What is SEDAR EEEE? Customer audience, exposure potential or the reach, distribution channel audience support, competitive advantage, resource investment required, event organization reputation, events characteristics and then entertainment and hospitality opportunities. Customer audience, here you need to consider if the demographic, attitudinal, cultural and lifestyle profile of the target audience is the same as what the product market is mean for. 
is sponsor for this event the best way to communicate about the product of the target audience? Exposure potential. Exposure potential, uh, that means that you have to understand the exposure potential by asking the following questions. Number one is that what will be the inherent news or new values of the event which you are going to give it to the sponsor? Will the extended print and uh, broadcast coverage and uh, be the local, regional, national, what you are going to do for them? Will the geographical scope, the media cover the product sales area? That should be answered. And then uh, will the promotional material be used and will the product name and the logo be identified on promotional material such as in events, posters uh, uh, like uh, tea cups or stationary items, etc., like t-shirts, um, their point of sale displays on tickets, press release, television, radio and print advertisements in various publications and how many of this you are going to provide for them, how you are going to provide for them. Can the event be tied to other media advertising channels? Will banners and signages be included in sponsorship and will they be visible during telecast? We have to be very clear in that. Sometimes you have to keep a record of it and then show to the sponsor. Where the program brochure will be a uh, product name appear, will the product name appear and what is the number or the size of the program advertisements which you are going to give it to that particular sponsor. If the public address system is to be used, will the product's name be mentioned in that? If so, how many times uh, and uh, with what frequency it is going to be printed or given? That should be clarified. Then what will be the location of display booths, uh, if any like uh, banners or flex boards or signages, if any and uh, will they be visible in the telecast? That should also be given. You can see the IPL matches or in any of the cricket matches. You can see the banners of uh, various advertisement people which will be covered at the back of them or uh, in the cinematic dances or something like that. You can see the backdrops which will be kept by them. You have to mention very clearly where you are going to keep their banners or else it will become a very big issue for the company. Then distribution channel audience or support. Will wholesalers, retailers or the franchisers participate in that event? Uh, for example, if you are going to introduce a new product uh, in the market, uh, your wholesalers or the retailers of a particular brand, uh, I can uh, say you an example, a pen, uh, a levitation pen is going to be introduced. A levitation pen, any st uh, stationary wholesalers or uh, uh, the franchisers or the retailers are going to come for the show whether they are going to witness it, that should be clearly mentioned for them and become aware of the sponsorship advantages and promotion. And then competitive advantage. To ascertain this advantage, you need to use the following questions. In what way is the event unique and distinctive from others? People may be conducting lot of events in your city or in your area like the same event like cultural festa or uh, some dance competitions or uh, cinematic uh, events or it may be a, a fair, a trade fair or a shows, uh, it may be a road show, product launch. But what way is the, your event is going to be distinct and uh, unique? What is the unique advantage of the event over the competitors? Does it have a USP, unique selling proposition? Are the sponsors strong and has the sponsorship have been uh, has been beneficial and then do we need multiple sponsors or do we go by a single sponsor depends upon the amount what you are going to spend for the uh, particular event uh, depends upon the budget event budget what we are going to uh, prepare it uh, you should uh, approach the sponsor. If suppose a particular sponsor or one sponsor is willing to give an entire money for the event. Uh, and uh, you can just hand over the main stage banner or for the title sponsors uh, you can use their own sponsorship for all these events uh, or event activities are these sponsors compatible with the event philosophy 
you should be very clear in that some companies may not know about uh, what is event management, uh, what is uh, what they are going to do it. Uh, they may be blank. Uh, it is your duty to explain about it. Uh, then does the event have a first more mover advantage over competitors? Is the communication plan, media, signage, advertising uniquely different from competition? Uh, that should be shown. People may be keeping banners or something like that, uh, but what way your advertising uh, which you are going to offer or what is your communication strategy which you are going to follow should be clearly explained to the sponsor. Will the competitors be allowed to use similar techniques in their events? You should calculate it and you must tell to them that uh, uh, if you have any special copyrights or permissions, you should explain about that except us nobody can use this for any other sponsors, uh, uh, any other events, uh, we are having an exclusive right for that, uh, that should be explained. Then this talks about uh, the resource investment requirement, uh, major part of any event management depends upon this and uh, the conversation start with the sponsor only with the help of this resource investment required requirement. This talks about total cost of uh, sponsorship what they are going to give you. Sponsorship cost and elements such as uh, our, the cash, uh, staff uh, time, administrative requirements, implementation, promotional investment etc. Check if there is any barter involved. Barter in the sense uh, goods and services given in exchange for uh, uh, going other goods and uh, services uh, for gaining other goods and services in the sense that sometimes the sponsor may be willing to sponsor some of the technical support or uh, they want to get, uh, get uh, some prizes and they want to distribute to you. So in those cases you should decide uh, what is the barter system we are going to agree with both of you. Does the event guarantee a minimum level of benefits to the company? Just for the sake of getting an event, please don't give any false hope for the uh, businessmen or the sponsors. That will ruin the business in the long run. Then about uh, event organizations uh, reputation, uh, that is repetition, we call it as the reputation, but I want to call it as uh, repetition because once you create a repetition, then only they will come again and again. So the goodwill or the reputation what you are going to create uh, that is most important. Is the event management company is reputed? Every sponsor will ask you the question first time. What about your company? Tell your story about your company. What are all the events you did it? Uh, if you are doing any event for the first time or repeatedly you are doing this event. Does it have an image with the sponsor company or uh, sponsoring company wants to be associated with? Uh, does the event management company have a proven track record in uh, stagging the event um, or staging the event uh, and other hosting the event or other events? Was the uh, past experience of the sponsoring company is a positive one? any uh, ill feelings or uh, any black marks or any uh, flaws which you might have been uttered during your last seasons should be openly explicitly given to the sponsor. You, you cannot suppress anything, you can just tell your uh, happenings and you can try to pacify them. Then event organizations reputation, it has a check uh, if the EMC that is event management company has undistributed control and authority over the activities in sanction. What are the company's potential liabilities and is there insurance? That should also be verified. It is a major part insurance check must be done. How quick is the event management company in delivering benefits to its sponsors based on past records. You should have a feedback record, you should have a track record, you should have data or database about your past events, how the sponsors were benefited out of it, any testimony about your sponsors, everything should be clearly tracked as a record and you should show to the sponsor who is going to sponsor the current event. How responsive is the organization staff to sponsor's request? If suppose he is asking for a letter, he is asking for a, some reference, we should not hesitate to give the reference of our earlier uh, records or for earlier address people or something like that. 
is the event organization staff readily accessible? The people may be uh, having a habit of uh, switching off their phone or keeping it in silent for hours together uh, when the uh, events are going on. But that should not be there, uh, there for all the cases. Uh, it should be readily available. Some uh, staff should be allocated for communication always and the event management company should take in care of this. Events characteristics, what kind of event will be held? You should clearly explain to them. The client or the sponsor should have a clear picture about the event, uh, what is going to be the event, when it is going to be happened, and is the uh, is it uh, the best of its kind? Uh, will this uh, type of event enhance the product image? Will the event be uh, repeated or will it be once in a time, once in a while? All these details must be clarified. Then entertainment and hospitality opportunities. Will this event provide opportunities for direct sales of the product or related merchandise? People may be sometimes thinking that they are coming for the trade shows, thinking that uh, uh, their products can be sold out very easily with huge lump sum of uh, money. But that cannot be possible. It may be sometimes only exhibitions. You should very clearly explain to them whether it is an exhibition or a trade fair or it is a stall making or it is only a, a, a supporting event. Uh, what is the uh, event you are going to conduct? Uh, at that time, you cannot argue with the uh, sponsors. When they are coming to the spot, what are all the specifications they wanted? Uh, what is their stall size? What are all the facilities we accepted to give it to them? We should be very clear in that and we should give all those facilities to them. And will there be celebrities uh, to serve as spokespeople for the product at what cost? They may be a title sponsor and they may be giving lot of uh, uh, money or help or sponsorship to us. Uh, but uh, you should be very, very cautious in attending those type of sponsors. Are tickets to the event included in the sponsorship? So many times we will get a clash with the client or with the uh, people, those who are sponsoring for us. A small sponsor may be getting one or two tickets, but he needs uh, 10 or 50 tickets during the event. Sometimes a big sponsor who may be asking for more tickets than what we are offering or what we had written in the contract. Please try to identify, try to accommodate them and then try to pacify them. How many tickets are used? for uh, how many events and for what activities uh, in the event and what opportunities will be there. Suppose the event may be for three days or four days, they may not be given tickets for all the people. They cannot give all the shows, only for certain shows we may be giving it. But specifically, you have to clearly mention to them what opportunities will be there for the sponsoring company guest or their team to interact with the celebrity. Thank you very much. I think you might have been uh, get clarified with lot of information about uh, identifying a potential sponsorship. With a small note, I am coming to a conclusion part. Even though we are having uh, running a business, uh, event management business, we are also like a person who is having always humble and polite and tolerable. When we are meeting the sponsors, they will have their own tension, they will have their own problems, they will have their own uh, risk and busyness in the business. We should be very, very polite and humble. Go and meet them, attend them patiently and get your sponsorship. That is the final note which I would like to conclude. Identify a potential sponsor for your event and rock the events. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.